I eat for a living. I'm not eating and spitting it out. I no, like no, no. to eat. Of not. I don't know if it was because I was a woman or because they just wanted to throw me into the fire. It was an ass whooping is what it was. So you didn't want to become a chef? No, I knew that already. And I knew that most food writers had never spent time in kitchens before. From the kitchens of Top Chef. Somehow, I think we were able to hold on to that kind of spirit of a kitchen and what it's yes. like to be a young chef. To the judges table of Top Chef. I have this memory of the very first day on set, sitting beside Tom, looking at him thinking like, what if this is a huge failure? Today we get the dish from the social siren of the food world, Gail Simons. It's all on the table. Great to see you. How are you? Thanks for having me. No, thank this is you. so exciting. Let's start the proper way. Ah, uh, how did you know? My favorite. Well, you know. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. What did you bring? I was trying to figure out what I wanted to cook with you, and I decided I need to create something that you would never necessarily make yourself. So yeah. it's no fish. No fish. I'm definitely shying away from fish. I decided I wanted to cook eggs. For me, I love eggs. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, it doesn't matter. I figured I would make an egg dish for you, but I certainly was never going to make an omelet or something very French. I wanted to do something completely out of your comfort zone. So I'm curious to know if you actually have ever is made it, this dish before. Is it a challenge before. you're giving me? Sort of am. It's called Welsh Rarebit. Have you ever had it before? Welsh Rarebit. Welsh Rarebit. Yes. No, I never had it. Awesome. It took a second for Eric to um, pronounce the name of the dish. Welsh Rarebit. Yeah, I never heard of that, and I thought it was rabbit. This is the most important ingredient for the eggs. You're not going to poach the eggs in a Guinness, are no, you? No, but that's actually not a bad idea. We can work on that later. That's cheddar. This is a clearly British-inspired yes. dish. It is a sauce that you pour over toasted bread. So it's like a gravy. Exactly. It's very like, much like a gravy, but it has cheese, so it's a little thicker and really, really rich. Richer, yes. It is one of my favorite things to have for breakfast or for lunch. Yes. It's very savory. It's really good for hangovers. A lot of salt. Ah, cheer to that. Right. You can start drinking now. That way, by the time we get to it, we'll have a hangover. I discovered this dish several years ago here in New York, actually. There was a little restaurant that I used to go to all the time, and I literally would go craving this dish. And years later, when my husband, Jeremy, finally proposed to me after many years of dating. Finally got wise. Yes, he, he got smart because he knew I was getting itchy. <laughs> he had someone make this dish and bring it to our house as breakfast in bed. As a surprise. Yes, and that's how he proposed to me. I do take food really personally, and I love to think about uh, the reason for a dish, how it came to be, why someone is making it at that particular moment, what it means to them, where it came from, how they learned it. All of those things go into creating um, the emotional connection that we have to food. And I also brought uh, a copy of yes, my Yes, that's very important. There you go. I'm excited about it, and you were generous enough to write a quote for me, so thank you so much. You have to sign it, though. Of course. Let's drink first. Sure, let's drink first. Okay, you want to make a cocktail? You know, Good. I'm not a cocktail kind of guy. Yeah. I, I know how to pop the champagne. That's, that's a very open a legitimate of skill. Wine. I have a memory of you liking tequila, I guess. I love tequila. I remembered that. So I decided we we're going to do a tequila Bloody Maria. Bloody Maria, I like it. Tequila has a lot more flavor than vodka. I, I just thought it'd be fun. Interestingly enough, I'm from Canada. Yes. And in Canada, we don't have Bloody Marys just for brunch. We drink them at happy hour. I mean, we don't drink the, them in the long. evening, but we drink them all day long. Yes. Oh, that's pretty cool. We, like, I like we need that. to keep warm from the cold. We need alcohol at all times. All right. So today we're doing... The Bloody Maria with the tequila. So we're going to start by putting celery salt, rimming our celery glasses. Salt. So I just put a little lemon yeah, juice like over that. the rim. So you, you grew up in Toronto? Yes. One of your parents was from South Africa? That's right, my father's that from South Africa. Your, your and your mom was Canadian? She's from Montreal. They met in Canada in the 60s. I'm gonna put some ice in here. My mother is an incredible cook. She was a food writer, and she ran a cooking school out of our home. And you hang out with your okay. mother, and then you learn exactly. how to cook like that? You have it in you, I mean, it's yeah. especially at an early age. And it was unconscious, that's it. Like, it was always in me, something I love, something I almost took for granted as a child. I'm let's, gonna let's, keep let's, Bloody Mary, yeah, yeah. so I'm just gonna free pour it a little bit. A little bit, you said? That looks good. First of all, tequila. the alcohol, and yes. then, and then the, the tomato juice. I'm gonna make it a little acidic, some lemon juice, and then you wanna grate some horseradish? Sure. You're gonna grate it right in here. My husband literally eats it with a spoon. We have an uh, author you didn't We're making a lot here. Oh, so you wanna going. make me work, okay. It's my one chance to boss you around, Eric. For me, it's relaxing. Good, yeah, I, I agree, I agree. <laughs> it's very different. That's probably good. Okay. 
And he's a good job, I, I think. I think he did an excellent job. That is beautifully <laughs> graded horseradish. I was looking for the compliment. <laughs> he was really happy to relinquish control of the kitchen, and I was happy to take it. Add a little salt and pepper to it, too. Beautiful, thank you. And then I'm actually gonna drizzle with a little bit of olive oil. Oh, you oil. put olive oil on top? Oh, I, I like the idea. You wanted to be a ballerina at one point. I did. From the age of six, probably until I graduated high school. Truthfully, what happened then, I liked to eat too much, quite frankly. And also, at the age of 18, I discovered that my boobs were bigger than most of the other girls who were dancing. And that's my body, and it's hard to do with the big boobs. Gail was very candid about very personal stuff. She's very outspoken and very honest. I was having a blast. I sort of stopped dancing when I went to college. When you went to Israel before college, yeah. when you, I think you worked in a kibbutz, right? That's right. There was about 600 people, 800 people. 600 people? people. Mm -hmm. A community. I worked on, on the chicken farm, essentially. Not, not killing chickens, not for chicken meat. I was picking eggs. Picking eggs. Caring for the chickens. I mean, we're talking about tens feeding, of feeding thousands of chickens. Exactly. And so I was assigned ah, there. That, that's just a assigned, the eggs yeah. today, I mean. You know, it's funny. I talk a lot about eggs in my book, and I realize the strange history I have with eggs, and it really, Absolutely. Comes from the kibbutz. Comes from that kibbutz. Yeah. And then you never end, ended up in, a, in their kitchen. Chickens are not intelligent animals, and I would get angry at them. They would sort of attack me, and they were, you know, they were dirty and they smelled. But then, through the course of the summer, something changed, and I ended up being so angry at them that I wanted to eat the eggs out of spite. As a vengeance. It was vengeance. It was disgusting. <laughs> and then I was moved from the chicken house into the kitchen. That's I went from picking the eggs to then making eggs for 600 people every morning. And then we left. And then you leave the kibbutz. And then I left the kibbutz. We traveled in, in the Middle East for a while, in Israel, and then into Egypt. And then I went home and started college. This is so nice. I... Cheers. Thank there you. There you go. Thank you. Now I know to make Bloody Maria. Mm. I expect you to um, be making it often. That's good. Mm -hmm. Let's take the Bloody Maria. Keep drinking. And then start to cook. Now let's talk about Top Chef. You really impose yourself as a judge. Between Padma, Tom and I, we, we play different roles. I think that over the years, I like to say that I've become sort of like a translator. For Tom. Tom. Tom's English is rough, no. Yes. So I think my role has kind of become that person who's translating that language to yes. the people who are watching at home. 